In this edition of Campus Reports, Scott Wiggins gives us insight into a common problem in local grocery stores. Lawrence Gilligan gets us the reaction from the Lobo community about the new men's basketball head coach. Kimberly Morris discusses a major change in how we will view television in the future. And if you want to get fit this summer, Aaron Lynx takes us to the gym. I'm Richard Cote. And I'm Janelle Newman. All these stories and more on Campus Reports. Local coverage. Student perspectives. At the University of New Mexico. From the KNME studios, this is Campus Report. Gas prices are not the only thing on the rise. Albuquerque citizens are paying more for their groceries due to a trend called basket snatching. Scott Wiggins has the report. There is a new trend emerging as the preferred way to make off with hundreds, even thousands of dollars worth of free groceries without paying for them. The new fad of the shoplifters is to try to wheel out full baskets of merchandise. It's called basket snatching, and it is costing grocery stores in the Albuquerque area thousands of dollars each week. The shoplifters mostly like to take alcohol, meats, and a variety of different things. Filling your basket as fast as you can and then making a run to the front door? It's hard to believe, but many criminals are playing supermarket sweep for real every day, and getting away with it. Joanne Hertz is the front-end supervisor for an Albuquerque area supermarket that has recently been plagued by thieves. One evening this customer comes in approximately 5.30, getting ready to walk out the door. I'd seen him heading towards the door walking kind of briskly. I walked in front of his basket and said, sir, do you have your receipt? He turned and he walked out. The value of the basket was approximately $1,000. It was a basket full of alcohol. Alcohol, meat, and other high-cost, low-volume items are perfect targets for shoplifters. And supermarkets are perfect targets as well. Why? The cops will just give them a no trespassing and let them go. So now all criminals have the chance at thousands of dollars worth of groceries for simply loading them up and running out the door. And they know that even if they get caught, it's only a misdemeanor ticket. It's no wonder so many people are taking to basket snatching. It never ends. People steal from this store every day. Until Albuquerque area supermarkets can get a grip on this growing problem, it is going to be left up to the public to split the bill. This is Scott Wiggins reporting. If you're a UNM student, you're probably thinking about the end of the year, finals, and summer vacation. But it might be time to start thinking about next semester and applying for financial aid. The deadline for a priority award is April 1st, but that doesn't mean that students can't continue to apply. However, UNM receives funds from the state and distributes those funds on a first-come, first-served basis. The later students that apply are more likely to receive less aid. The students can go on the web and find out what they need to do to complete their application. It's a pretty easy process. You go on local web and it, it allows you to look on the list of what you need to turn in for um, whether you need your, your, your federal tax or um, transcripts or whatever. So it's not too bad. It's pretty easy. Advisors hope to send out award letters in late April, so they're encouraging students to complete their application soon. Lobos were howling for a new coach, and they got one with a six-figure price tag. Lawrence Gilligan has a report. Pleasure to introduce the new head coach, the 19th head coach of the University of New Mexico, Steve Alves. The University of New Mexico men's basketball program has a new leader of the pack. It is a momentous day in Lobo, uh, really in Lobo basketball history. And we're thrilled to be announcing the hiring of Coach Alford. He's a proven head coach. And l let me reiterate, this guy has been our number one target from the very beginning. We got the guy we wanted. We're finalizing agreements with Coach Alford, but the uh, compensation is $975,000. Uh, but let me tell you something, folks. We aspire to have a great basketball program. We aspire to compete with the best. And if you want to compete with the best, you need to pay the best. And that's what we're willing to do. Those were the words of UNM Athletic Director Paul Krebs on the hiring of new head coach Steve Alford. Alford previously coached at the University of Iowa and has made seven NCAA tournament appearances. Coach Alford is a nationally well-known head coach, and Eyewitness News 4 Lobo Basketball Insider Lee Faria 
feels that Alford will have a tremendous impact on recruiting and on the program itself. It's players. <laughs> it's plain and simple players. Mm -hmm. And people in this community don't seem to understand that. If you have players, you win. If you don't have players, you don't win. The bottom line with the, with the name of Steve Alford should be able to get players here. People know who he is. When, when Richie McKay talks in practice about, hey, I understand, I was a player. Yeah. Well, he played at Division II Seattle Pacific. What kind of reaction do you think J.R. Giddens, who you know, is probably is the most talented player we've had in the program uh, since Kenny Thomas, with the exception of Danny Granger, thinks when he says, I'm a player, I played at Seattle Pacific. No. If Steve Alford says, hey, I played at Indiana, won a national championship, I won an Olympic gold medal, I scored 2,400 points. It means something. Coach Alford feels that the student section will play a huge role next year by packing the pit and cheering on their Lobos. Some of the leaders of the student and the student body and come up with a name for the student section. We've got heavy involvement with Nike. Uh, we get shirts for all the student sections, get a brand for the student section, and uh, really make it a special event uh, that I think that's what coming to the pit's all about. With a new head coach, student Brian Zhu feels that students should be excited about next season. The Rich McKay years and stuff, student section, I mean, we got a free student section last year, which was awesome, but then, you know, it was really high in attendance the first couple games, and then once we started losing, the students' attendance went way down, and I just hope that with... Uh, Alfred and stuff that would bring our student section back up to where it once was. UNM basketball player Daniel Ferris is very optimistic about the hiring of Coach Alford. I mean, I'm excited. Uh, he's a pretty big name coach. Um, you know, he's won a lot of, he's won at every single level, college, NBA. So I mean, I'm excited. He knows a lot of the game. So hopefully, uh, you know, let's get to the tournament this next year. The UNM men's basketball program finished last season with an overall record of 15 and 17. 15 and 17 is a record. That actually gives the Lobos the second losingest season in the past 24 seasons. With the excitement of signing a new head coach, students should definitely get out here next season and support their Lobos. This is Lawrence Gilligan for Campus Report. 2009 may seem insignificant, but the year holds a big change in how we watch television. Kimberly Morris sat down with KNME's production manager to discuss this change. Hi Franz, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine, thank you. Great, thanks for coming in. My pleasure. When will KNME and every other station be changing from analog to KNME? Well, uh, KNME has been broadcasting. In fact, KNME was the first station in this market to broadcast in digital, but we've been doing simultaneous analog and digital broadcasts. We will cease the analog broadcast um, early part of 09, and all the other stations will cease broadcast early part of 09. And what kind of effect do you think this is going to have on the television viewing audience? Well, given that most of the viewing audience, at least in this market, I'd say 60 to 70 percent get us on Comcast cable or satellite direct, uh, probably no, uh, none at all, because they're going to continue seeing us whether they have an analog or a digital set. Whatever they're hooked up to now will continue to work. Uh, those people who are receiving off of broadcast, however, will cease to receive us unless they buy a digital broadcast television set. And do you know if the government will have any sort of emergency channel that will be um, analyze, an analog station? You know, that's a good question, I, and I, I don't know. Um, I have not heard that they are going to continue broadcasting in analog in any form. All emergency services, as far as I know, are being switched over to digital. But it would not surprise me if Congress implemented something like that. Okay, great. Thanks for being here today. My pleasure. If you're looking to get in shape this summer, reporter Aaron Lynx has a solution for those overcrowded gyms. A lot of UNM students are trying to get in shape for the summer. If you're not working out at Johnson Gym, some of the other popular options include Define Fitness and Gold's Gym. Andrew Quinlan has been working out at Define Fitness. Define Fitness is a good environment to work out with. A lot of my friends come here and that gives me a lot of motivation to come. For those people who don't like the big crowded environments of gyms like Define Fitness and Gold's Gym, there's another gym that may be ideal. The PowerFlex Gym is located on Eubank between Indian School and Constitution and is open for 24 hours a day. The gym is owned and operated by 30-year-old Dustin Melville, who is a bodybuilding champion and UNM graduate. I graduated from UNM with, with a business management degree and, and took some core classes in entrepreneurial studies. I also worked for my father's business for five years, so I have an intimate knowledge of, of how to run a business and the operation involved, and, and that's my main focus. 
Dustin utilizes what he learned at UNM's business school to bring something to the table he believes that the bigger chain gyms just can't offer. As we go through our expansion process in our other room over here, we're actually going to be mounting up some televisions for people to watch while they're training. My focus was more into the smaller gym environment, more individualized attention to the members, uh, putting together a nice quality small place that, that was open 24 hours. 21-year-old Skylar Whitney is a student who works for Dustin. I was actually going to school for exercise science and I originally saw the supplement stop next door, came in, talked to Dustin, ended up getting kind of an apprenticeship job and it just turned into a full-blown start out working here. Because of his years of training experience, Dustin only allows the very best equipment in his gym and at $30 a month, it's a real bargain. Larger clubs, chain clubs, uh, you may never see a manager and you definitely won't see the CEO walking around. Well, I like Dustin's gym so much I signed up for it on the spot. And it may just be the answer for you too, if you don't like the big crowds. This is Aaron Links reporting. I may have to stop eating those breakfast burritos and join Aaron at the gym. While you have fun on that treadmill, thanks for joining us on this edition of Campers Reports. We'll see you next week.